Yes, yeah, so the Wonder Woman movie is finished. And let me just quote this scripture here. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's all about love at the end of the day. Wonder Woman is the central piece. Her thing is love and protection of the earth and mankind, right? Now, interestingly enough, she is all about love. And yet, she is the most likely of these three to kill. She is. Superman is the least likely of the three to kill. Just what it is. But you really would appreciate Batman v Superman and Man of Steel a lot more by watching Wonder Woman. It's really awesome. Um, I remember and two incidents in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, which actually are highlighted, I think, a lot more. I mean, I just watched Batman v Superman and Man of Steel, by the way, back to back, and the sequence is just awesome. But it really enlightens us a little bit more about Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and just the origins of Batman, the origins of Superman, the origins of Wonder Woman, all shown in those three movies, Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman, and Man of Steel. It's really awesome. As you can see here, Wonder Woman is the central piece that unites the Trinity together. She's sort of like a mixture of Superman and Batman in that she inspires hope in mankind and she's hopeful about them. And at the same time, she also wants to stamp out the negative elements of mankind because Batman is all about prevention, Superman is all about enabling and hope, right? And she's a combination of both. She is obviously a warrior. She's dressed in warrior costume. So killing for her is not a big deal as much as it will be for Superman, who is not really built as a warrior. He's not a warrior. He's not really. He's very powerful, but he's not a warrior. And Batman, he's a warrior. Well, he's trained himself to the tooth, but again, mostly for localized things, and he's a human. She's a god. He's a god. And so, you know, she's a mixture of both. So... When I watched that Batman v Superman, one of the things that really is awesome is the double meaning, the dual meaning, the triple meaning, the quadruple meaning of things in Batman v Superman. And for those people who say, oh, it's going to become a cult classic because of the rebellious people who didn't listen to the media and other people and thought it had virtue in the movie, uh, you're partially correct because it's not that they were rebellious, it's just that they saw virtue in the movie and they decided to push back. And quite frankly... This is not a Michael Bay film. I love some of Michael Bay's films. The Rock, you know, Bad Boys 2. You know, he's got a number of really good films that he came out with. Um, I didn't particularly like Bad Boys 2, but uh, I think Martin Lawrence really redeemed it. But at the end of the day, Michael Bay is not a deep filmmaker like Zack Snyder is. Zack Snyder is able to really bring about ideas and concepts in his movies. And that's what makes the rewatchability factor in the Zack Snyder film incredible. And there's the other interesting thing about Zack Snyder films. You look at Watchmen. At the time Watchmen came out, they said Zack Snyder butchered Watchmen. He's the worst guy to have done Watchmen. Blah, 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 blah. I gotta give it a two years time. Now everybody's hailing Zack Snyder as the man who took on the impossible task and made it possible with Watchmen. Because they saw the director's cut. Everybody's apologizing. They go back and watch the theatrical cut now. They see the meaning behind it. And they're like, oh, man, Zack Snyder. Oh. That's how some people became Zack Snyder fans, right? Everybody knows Zack Snyder from 300. They said, oh, he can do action. Right? Dawn of the Dead. You can do action. And if you hear people say, Zack Snyder can do action. But until Watchmen, we realized he could do drama. And people really started to respect him with how he paid tribute to the comics. Even though that was a box office flop. And then he goes and does Man of Steel. Same thing. People say, oh, Man of Steel, Super Zack Snyder hates Superman. He does not get Superman. This thing is a box office flop. It's the worst thing. It's going to be a forgettable movie. You get further and further away from the debut of Man of Steel and more and more people are saying the more you watch Man of Steel, the better you like it. It's one of the best DCEU films. It's actually the best, and now I'm hearing it's the best superhero film ever made. I heard that from Amadeus on YouTube. And I'm looking at this and, and people as they move further and further away from Zack Snyder's films and the hate that, that was buzzing around him, they love the films more and more. Batman v Superman right now is ahead of... Captain America Civil War in terms of, box, uh, not box office, um, in terms of uh, DVD and Blu-ray sales, okay? More and more people love the ultimate cut. Again, people are saying they apologize to Zack Snyder for Batman v Superman. And more and more people love the film. It's very rewatchable because every time you rewatch the films, Zack Snyder's films, you get more value out of them. So it, I don't think, I wasn't around, I can tell you. I wasn't around when Watchmen came out to defend Watchmen. I wasn't around. I was around when Man of Steel was there, but I didn't defend Man of Steel. Okay, 
I only defended Batman v Superman, and I can tell you right now, it's not because of the people who defend Batman v Superman that's getting more popular. It's because people are realizing more and more as they cover things and they see all these Easter eggs and they see all the double speech and double talk and how these things carry on to the next movie and how it sets up other things and how the movie in itself is intrinsic of mankind, not just a usual superhero trope movie. I can tell you for a fact that people are getting so much value out of these movies now that they're becoming classics they're not cult classics they're classics they're becoming classics and they're being remembered longer and longer than say uh captain america civil war who everybody probably forgot by now <laughs> you know what i'm saying and what is so cool about this is wonder woman just brings to light more value into batman v superman you know I mean, it's just a hell of a, it's just a hell of a great, great movie. I, I can't tell you. Right now, Batman v Superman is my number one comic book movie of all time. It surpassed any other comic book movie. I don't think there'll be another comic book movie that'll do better than Batman v Superman in my mind. Um, maybe Justice League might do it. I doubt it. I doubt it because it's, it's Batman v Superman is a special film. It's just, just a very, very special film. Let me give you an example of what I mean. So, first of all, if you look at Batman v Superman, the way how the characters are portrayed are not in terms of their superhero idea, um, superhero identities, but in terms of them as people. Diana, uh, Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne. They're dealt as people. No superhero movie did that before this. Not The Dark Knight, none of them. Okay? And then Wonder Woman comes along, and again, not once in that movie do you hear Diana's name being called Wonder Woman. She never is. Okay? So, they treat these superheroes, not in the usual superhero trope in Batman v Superman, but they change the paradigm of how a superhero is actually dealt with, and they were dealt with as people. Okay? The other thing that I thought was very interesting about this was that you had really excellent script writing. What I mean by this is the way how the words were couched in the script and how the actors had to say the words, they have multiple meanings and they also project backwards and forwards in the DCEU. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. First of all, when Bruce Wayne goes chasing down Diana, goes to this ex antiques exhibition, she's as, and he informs her about uh, a sword, an old sword called the Triumph, which was a fake, and she finishes his sentence. She turns and she says, excuse me, and she's going away. He grabs her arm and he says, uh, you know, it is impolite. Uh, you took something that belongs to me. It's impolite to steal. And she says, is it stealing if you steal from a thief? Now, I mean, let me just tell you something. That saying means two things. She knocked down two things in that one sentence. All right. The first thing she knocks down is she answers Bruce Wayne, you're stealing, bro. So it's fair game for me to steal from you. And then the second thing, which I thought was pretty awesome, is that she's saying that she stole from Lex Luthor, who stole something from her. So she's knocking out two birds in one stone. She goes on to explain that later on to Bruce Wayne. On top of that, what's really cool about that scene, and I'm not really going into the details of the dialogue, but suffice it to say, when Bruce Wayne is going looking for her in the Antiques exhibition, is she had already replaced the drive that she had stole from him into his car, which means she had to be watching him. <laughs> her eye was on him. When he was thinking his eye was on her, her eye was on him. So I thought it was just, she's so many steps ahead of him. And the other thing is she actually manipulates him because she's giving him back the drive so he would crack the drive so he would find who she is. Because he's saying, you know, you, that you think that babe in the woods act is something that will fool me. Nine out of ten men it will fool. And she says, so you're the tenth? And she says, no, I'm the first. <laughs> Which is pretty funny when he says that because... He's basically saying the other nine they getting spared. I already I already see your babe in the wood act. And he says, you know, I know a lot of women like you. And she laughs and she says, You don't really know quite a woman like me, right? And she's laughing as she's 
uh, fixing his shirt and adjusting his tie. And she says, you know what they say about little boys? Something, 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 with no reason to share. They're not inclined to share, in other words. She said, I did not steal your drive. I borrowed it. And I replaced it in the glove compartment of your car. And he's like, he got that look that Steve Trevor had when he was in the alleyway. He's like looking at her and she's like, Mr. Wayne. And she walks away on him. <laughs> and she's playing him. He doesn't even realize she's playing him until he discovers who she is on the thumb drive. And he sends back the information to her so she gets to know what's on the drive. Because she said it's encrypted. So she gave him back the drive so he would decrypt it. So he would send the information to her when he finds out who she is. <laughs> so she's playing him all around. And it just shows you how, how brilliant this is. Not only is Lex Luthor playing people. But Diana is smart enough to play Bruce Wayne. You see what I'm saying? And Bruce Wayne is not a guy you just play. Okay, like that. Of course, with the case with Lex Luthor, uh, Bruce Wayne is playing along with Lex Luthor because, obviously, uh, Lex Luthor has tapped into his psyche. He's tapped into his psychological game. He's playing with Bruce Wayne. With Diana, Diana is kind of doing like what Catwoman would do with Bruce Wayne. She plays games with him as well to make him chase her so he can solve the crime a little bit better, right? Um, and same thing here. Bruce Wayne, he finds Diana attractive, so he's tracking her down. She pauses, remember, when she steals the item, she pauses so Bruce Wayne will see her. She wants him to see her so he would chase her down so that... She would be able to give him back the drive, so you crack the drive, so you can get the information to her on what Lex Luthor knows about her. Because he gave her all of the data that Lex Luthor has on the metahumans. And he's, he's dialoguing with her all along. And of course, she ends up protecting him, and then he's like all Steve Trevor. He's all puzzled when she starts to really take on Doomsday and beat the crap out of him. And she's like, I've seen monsters from another world before. And he's like, and, and then uh, Clark is looking at him like, she's with you? And he's like, I thought she's with you. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. It's really funny. I, I, I got to add it to him. That was, again, good script writing. Because, again, if you don't understand the depths of what's happening, Steve Trevor saw it in the alley. And he was like, what he said was, so did you show me everything? <laughs> is that all you got? <laughs> Steve Trevor. He was like puzzled. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just saying that uh, Steve Trevor uh, and Bruce Wayne, they have this shock on seeing what Diana can do. Right? Of course, she's not even called Wonder Woman in Batman v Superman either, which I thought was very curious. Then, and she does create the wonder in you. <laughs> You're like, what the heck? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> in fact, Ludendorff, he says, Who is this? What is this? He even says, What are you? <laughs> he doesn't say, Who are you? He says, What are you? <laughs> so, I mean, she gets, I mean, she, everybody's like, you know, it flips, it flips people. I mean, even when you looked at in Wonder Woman, when she was, um, when she took on all the people and then she, she said, I'm going ahead into the village. And the other guys just kind of stand up and watch. <laughs> They're watching like, Steve? <laughs> when she also, uh, the guy pulled the gun on Charlie. And she just like flung that dude. He just grabbed the gun and just flung the guy. And the dude was like, I don't know if I'm afraid or aroused. <laughs> and he sits down, Sammy. <laughs> and Diana is quite a trip, man. She, she make everybody flip out. Everybody be like, what? And then, you remember also when she went up into the meeting with the generals? And this man is like, who is this one? <laughs> he says that nonstop. He's like, who is this woman? <laughs> He's saying that nonstop through the meeting. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so that's the look that Batman gives Superman. He's like, I thought she's with you. <laughs> very rare you see Batman confused okay <laughs> I even saw him get up out of there <laughs> with Doomsday he was like petrified he was like pew <laughs> he, was still, he was still watching Doomsday <laughs> I got out of it that was funny man it was hilarious cause you don't really see Batman <laughs> you don't ever see Batman in those kinds of compromising positions usually he's the intimidator right 
And even his voice in the movie is like, you know, very intimidating voice. It's like, I thought she's with you. That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> He's watching Superman all bewildered. <laughs> I just, oh my God. It's hilarious, man. Yeah, Wonder Woman will, <laughs> Wonder Woman will do that to you. <laughs> So, uh, I enjoyed, I really enjoyed Batman v Superman for that. I'm not saying it's the funniest movie in the world. It sure as hell isn't. And, um, Wonder Woman isn't funny either, actually. It's kind of sad. But I'm just saying that, um, when it comes to, uh, Wonder Woman, you know, there's a reason she called Wonder Woman. You know, you gonna be wondering about a whole bunch of stuff. You'd be like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> Yep. I remember also when Steve Trevor, he was trying to, they had just landed in London. And Steve Trevor, he's like, no, 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 we need to go to drop this book off, right? And he's trying to move away and she just kind of grabs him. <laughs> <laughs> she grabs him and he's like like a little toy. Like, ah, no, you you need to tell the truth, Steve. <laughs> Steve's like, okay, I, I can't outpower her. <laughs> about like a toy man I mean oh my gosh I'm telling you man the thing about uh, <laughs> the thing about these movies that I like is how they get the situational humor in there and also the characters you know they this is what <laughs> you know this is what Batman would do <laughs> when Superman turns to him Clark turns to him and says she's with you and he's like I thought she's with you <laughs> Bruce Wayne, he's like confused. <laughs> he sincerely says, I thought she's with you. <laughs> it's so funny to me, man. It's hilarious. Because <laughs> he doesn't know much about Diana. He knows she's very old. <laughs> then she sees, sees her kicking ass, and he's like, and he's kicking ass a doomsday. This is a guy he's mortally afraid of. <laughs> so she's, he's like, okay, she's super strong. <laughs> she must be associated with Superman. <laughs> He's probably thinking maybe she's a Kryptonian or something. He doesn't know, right? She's Wonder Woman. That's what makes you wonder, right? So, I mean, it's just fun to see these things after watching Wonder Woman and seeing her kick ass and stuff. And then everybody's all confused. I even saw when the soldier, when she was uh, putting on the tiara, which was Antiope's tiara, right? Again, these are all little details I always pay attention to, right, in the movie. She puts on Antiope's uh, star on her head because she's about to take on the spirit of Antiope. You get what I'm saying? She's one of the greatest warriors. So she's going to go to war now. But she's doing it because why? As she told her mother, you know, I'm here to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Right? Her principal purpose for being there is to protect people. She's a protector. The Amazons, they came to give men love and to protect them, right? So she doesn't have a problem going to war. She doesn't have a problem killing to protect, okay? And <clears throat> that's what I think a lot of people don't understand. Diana's different. To, to some degree, her superhero and trope is something like Captain America and uh, Iron Man and all these other uh, superheroes in that she goes to war to protect. The difference between Diana and Captain America and Iron Man and all these other guys is she's not necessarily trying to win over the bad guys. She's not trying to defeat the bad guys, necessarily. As her movie shows, she has a trope that's completely different to any other superhero you've ever seen. Except for Batman the Lego movie and the Lego movie, okay? <clears throat> her trope is one in which she's not just fighting the bad guys. In fact, you saw that she did not destroy Dr. Poison. She didn't even try to incarcerate her. She let her get away. Because her thing is about love. She has that Superman element in her where she's about inspiring others and she's about loving others. And it's not about paying back to people what they deserve. So she's not just about justice without mercy. I remember when Superman says to Batman, consider this mercy. And he flies off. He's saying, the bat is dead. Bury it. 
consider this mercy. This is after he gathers all this information on Batman and he interviews a lady and she tells him Batman doesn't understand pen and ink. He only understands brute force, right? Superman doesn't exert his power on Batman, right? Batman slams into Superman and goes careening off to the <laughs> corner, right? His car hits into the gas station and everything bursts into flames. <laughs> Superman comes and just peels off the top of the car and just throws the stuff away. Batman rises up like the beast that he is because he's not, he's not going to show that. He's going to have a poker face and he's not going to show that he's intimidated. And you know, he's the Batman right now. <clears throat> and Superman says to him, you know, look, you need to put away the Bat costume. The Bat is dead. Bury it. Consider this mercy. And Superman's turning to leave and Batman's like, do you bleed? <laughs> That's a typical Batman statement, though. That's something Batman would do. Because he's still trying to get into the other guy's head. Right? And Superman's not even taking him on. He just flies off. And Superman uses his physical force because the lady tells him, those guys, they don't understand discussion. They understand force. And you see later on when Superman confronts Batman again, he's trying to talk to Batman. Batman will not listen. So he uses physical force to get his attention. And then Superman then starts to talk to him so he gets his point across. He says, look, stay down. If I wanted to, you'd be dead already. Which is true. If Superman wanted to kill Batman, he'd just snap his back in half and that would be it. You know, and just throw him away. You know, if he wanted to, he could have killed Batman a long time ago, right? But clearly he was just trying to get Batman's attention so that Batman and him could have a discussion. But the only way he was able to get Batman's attention was actually by talking to his inner psyche. Which is why the Martha scene is such a powerful scene for anyone with a little bit of experience in heartbreak and disaster. You, you, you'll be able to understand that scene. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so, it's not that I'm saying that people are stupid for misunderstanding the scene. But I think a lot of people who condemn that scene, which... To me, it's, it's a few. It's not. It's not really a majority of people. Other people took on the bandwagon because people are sheep and started saying. But most of the people who understood the scene understood what happened. Batman was going down the wrong pathway. It's not that if you tell Bat Batman save Martha, he's going to just flip out. No. At that point in time, and it's not that Batman was killing people before that. Batman became more savage as the ultimate cut shows. He got there was a new mean in him. He got more savage because of Superman. He knew he had to be very savage to be able to take out Superman. And so he was mentally you know boosting up himself to deal with this superpower being, okay? So when he actually had Superman on his foot, you heard the statements he made which were powerful. He said, "You're not a god. You're not even a man." So that because he wasn't a human like Batman, he didn't feel he was obligated to have any mercy or to treat Superman any way good. As far as he was concerned, he was an alien and he was evil. And this is how Americans sometimes look at aliens in their country. People who are not, they come from other countries, especially from uh, Islamic countries. Um, they're thinking of them as exactly how Batman thought of Superman. I thought... This movie was very insightful in that respect. I mean, it's just so deep. It's not funny. And still, to this day, we have this anti-immigration sort of sentiment I'm hearing in the United States of America, all because your economy is bad, because uh, a couple terrorist people have done bad things in other countries. And so somehow you feel unsafe. You feel just like Batman. You feel that uh, Superman is going to be dangerous and detrimental to people. And then when the Capitol building exploded, which is a terrorist act, which is basically what terrorists are doing today. They're exploding things a lot and, and terrorizing people. When that terrorist act happened, Batman snapped. And he was like, we got we to gotta get these guys. We got to kill them. And that's how we feel. When a terrorist act happens in the world, don't you feel outraged? Don't you feel angry? Don't you feel angst? Don't you feel you need to get these people back? So I understand. I can identify with Batman on what he was doing. You understand, guys? So, I mean, Superman was able to show him he was human. And he had human people who cared about him. And that he actually cares about other people. 
But he only was able to get Batman's attention to snap him out of it because of the thing that made Batman who he was. He was able to speak to that. So that's basically what happened there. <clears throat> anyway, guys, it's raining. I have not been able to go out to work, but I wanted to share that stuff with you guys. And I watched Man of Steel and Batman v Superman back to back. And oh, so nice, so sweet, so much stuff there going on. I'm going to probably watch the trilogy over the weekend again. Um, when I say trilogy, I mean Batman, um, Man of Steel, Batman, and then Wonder Woman back to back again. So I'm looking forward to that. A couple more things. We got some toys here. We got the DC the Diamond Vinyl uh, Justice League. Here you see Batman and Superman here. Pretty cool. And you have here Wonder Woman, Aquaman, <clears throat> The Flash and Cyborg. They'll be coming out in stores soon. And then you have the SH Figure Arts. Figure Arts. It's a Japanese firm, and they do pretty decent uh, toys here. This is the action figure for Batman. Here's the action figure, you know, moving around. Looks like Ben Affleck. It's pretty good. Thought it was pretty dope, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. On that note, you guys have a great one. Have a great weekend as well.